In this video, I'm going to explain how our mind gets in the way of us believing in ourselves. I'll be using examples from the Amazon Prime documentary on Mike Tyson. Then going to show some raw footage from a recent private lesson where I coached one of my skateboarding students through a mental barrier that was keeping her from doing her first trick. Let's get started. You probably know Mike Tyson to be one of the most successful boxers of all time. This guy was getting first round knockouts every single time. It was ridiculous. What you might not know and what I did not know was that he actually had a rather rough childhood. He was robbing people. He was going in and out of juvenile hall. And eventually he was sent to upstate New York to a detention center for boys. And that's where he met Cus D'Amato, the man who would soon become his coach, trainer, mentor, and father figure all in one. Now, Cus D'Amato saw the potential in Tyson, but Tyson didn't trust anybody, let alone a 70-year-old Italian-American guy from upstate New York. In the documentary, Tyson talked about the early days with Cus D'Amato, and he said, one day he said to me, listen, you have the chance to change your life, your family's life. You could be something very special. Don't you want to be a champion? You could be champion of the world. You could devastate the world. Tyson said, I looked at this guy and I said, this guy's really crazy. D'Amato said, you do what I tell you to do. And if it doesn't work, you can leave. So Tyson said, okay, bet. So I did everything this man told me to do. And I won. I won every championship. But let's pause here and reflect. Because what we have here is the world heavyweight champion saying that at the age of 13 his coach told him you could be champion of the world and this 13 year old future champion thought the coach was crazy that speaks to the power of the mind and let's also take a moment to ask ourselves what is our destiny our purpose in life that we maybe have been neglecting simply due to either a lack of focus or lack of belief, or maybe just being distracted by other priorities. Or actually, we might call them pseudo priorities if they're not our true priorities. But it gets even better. Here's another quote from that documentary where Tyson talks more about his coach, Customata. As time was going on, this guy kept saying great things. He kept saying, you're a great fighter. You're the greatest. You'll do splendid. You look great. You're looking better. He kept giving me compliments and compliments about everything I did. What's wrong with this guy? I never had the slightest idea he was building up my confidence. But as time went on, I understood what he was doing. As I became an adult, I understood he was building up my confidence. So let's pause and reflect again and ask ourselves, how often do we hear things like, you're looking great, you're looking better than yesterday, it's going better, you're about to succeed, everything's working for you. Now there's one more piece to this, and I saw this in a piece of footage that was filmed right before one of Tyson's boxing matches. It wasn't Customato, it was actually some sort of assistant trainer, somebody, almost like forehead to forehead with Mike Tyson just before the match, and he said to Mike, tell me what you're gonna do. And Mike Tyson replied, I'm going to go in there, jab to the head, then hits to the body, then I'm going to move after I hit, punch the body. And I thought to myself, that's what happens when you focus a lion. But why does it seem so rare for us to tap into that level of focus? My belief is that it's the mind that keeps us from that. And my belief was confirmed in the next few moments of that documentary when they showed a clip of Mike Tyson training in the gym, Customato standing off to the side and saying this, your mind is not in your way. Your mind is not in your way. And that's when I saw it clearly, that it's about the image we hold in our mind, the feeling, the thought, the sound, to walk into a boxing ring and truly, truly believe that you are going to win that you are going to knock out your opponent. That belief is priceless. Because it's one thing to give the gift of helping someone accomplish something, and that's great. You see them do it and they get the result they want. But 
that gift is always preceded by another gift and that first gift is getting them to buy into the idea that they can do that thing coffee break ah, it's not that good now this is a pattern I often see in my skateboarding classes here in California and when I started these classes six years ago I didn't realize there would be so much psychology in it but there is in the clip I'm about to show you this student was very frustrated because for months she had been trying to learn her first major trick. You spin the board 180 degrees and you land back on it. Now physically, she could do it. She could spin the board, she could land her right foot on it, she could spin it, she could land her left foot on it. She could even land it in the grass. She couldn't land it on the concrete because the fear of falling was a mental barrier. But she broke through it. So watch here and see what you notice. I'm not sure I can land it today, that's the same. Go for it. You got it. The board is small. In your mind, this board is a tiny little thing. It weighs like half an ounce. You need... I just feel like I'm not stepping towards the board. I mean, I'm still getting yeah. supported, but over there, on my feet that I catch like this, this uh -huh. is not going to work. There is a beast inside of you that needs to come out. <laughs> no, there really is. Because you tell me how bad you want this trick. It's time to get it. Yep, there you go. Baby, step it. That's, that's what it looks like right before somebody lands it. Keep going, keep going. Each time you do it, one of these could be it. That's it. Ah, oh, stick it. Do it again. Come on, you gotta stick it, stick it harder. But that was it. That was it. You got it. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Centered landing this time. Same thing. Same thing. Just centered landing. Yeah. Boom. That's it. You officially did it. Good stuff, huh? Now, to come back to Mike Tyson for a moment, Cus D'Amato coached him for maybe seven years or so until, in 1985, Cus D'Amato passed away at the age of 77. And Mike Tyson was lost. If you watch the documentary, you'll see that focus just dissipate into thin air, which raises a question about coaches and mentors and trainers, etc., are we dependent on them and is there a way to not be so dependent on them? I had a mentor a few years back that gave me a lot of confidence but then this mentor had some personal issues that prevented him from being able to continue helping me. And I can tell you what happened, maybe you can relate to this. It felt like unplugging from a power source. It felt like I was doing great, I was more confident than ever, then suddenly the plug comes out and it's like you have no electricity. It's a, it's a very helpless feeling. But I do think there is a solution to this. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the very next video. Thank you for watching. Think deeply and put your existence first.